We've surveyed the electron group arrangements, but now it's time to consider the effect of the number of non-bonding lone pairs on the central atom on what's called the molecular geometry. And here now we see the importance of using the specific terms electron group arrangement and molecular geometry. Molecular geometry is simply the positions of atoms in space relative to the central atom, while the electron group arrangement also takes into account non-bonding lone pairs. So molecular geometry is a distinct concept from the electron group arrangement. The electrons within electron groups can be part of bonds, bonding electrons, or they can be unshared or non-bonding electron pairs. When we don't account really for the non-bonding electron pairs, when we pretend they're not there and look at the geometry of the atoms within the molecule, we get what's called the molecular geometry. And the specific molecular geometries have particular names that account for the positions of atoms only. So for a given electron group arrangement, we may have more than one molecular geometry if that geometry can support more than one non-bonding lone pair. And the relationship between molecular geometries and the electron group arrangement depends on the specific numbers of non-bonding lone pairs on the central atom and bonding pairs. As a quick example of this, let's consider the tetrahedral arrangement for three different atoms, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen, surrounded by hydrogen atoms. Carbon forms four bonds, has a valence of four, and so its hydride, its compound of hydrogen, is CH4 with four single bonds, four bonding pairs to hydrogens. This is the tetrahedral electron group arrangement, and it's what we'll call the tetrahedral geometry. Nitrogen has a valence of only three and has five valence electrons total, and so it has one lone pair in its structure in H3. If we account only for the positions of the atoms within this structure and think about what we would call this geometry, it looks like a trigonal pyramid, and so it's called pyramidal or pyramidal. If we keep going to oxygen and H2O, the valence of oxygen is two, and it has six valence electrons, and so it has two unshared electron pairs. Note that even though those electron pairs are still occupying kind of the same positions, in other words, even though the electron group arrangement is still tetrahedral, the geometry now, accounting for only the atoms, oxygen and hydrogen, is bent. We've got a bond angle there of about 109.5 degrees, and so it just looks almost like a linear structure, except with one of the OH bonds kind of jiggled over a little bit to form a bond angle smaller than 180 degrees. So this is the bent molecular geometry. By adding lone pairs to the different electron group arrangements, we can systematically generate the different types of molecular geometries. For a steric number of two, the linear electron group arrangement, we can really have no lone pairs at the central atom. If we do have a lone pair on A, then geometry becomes a non-issue, right, since there's only one bond to another atom in the structure. And so the only molecular geometry possible for an electron group arrangement of linear is the linear geometry. Moving down to a steric number of three, if we have no lone pairs at the central atom, the molecular geometry matches the electron group arrangement. And you'll notice that this happens for every electron group arrangement as we move through. If we have one lone pair attached to the central atom A, then we arrive at a bent structure where XAX just looks like, again, a kind of jiggled linear structure with a smaller bond angle than 180 degrees. We can stop there because with two lone pairs on the central atom, we again have only one bond of A to an X atom, and so geometry becomes a non-issue. For a steric number of four, with no lone pairs, we again see a match between the molecular geometry and the electron group arrangement. Tetrahedral geometry, tetrahedral arrangement. With one lone pair, that's the NH3 situation, remember. We have one lone pair occupying one of the positions of the tetrahedron, and the other three and the A atom form a pyramid. So this is known as trigonal pyramidal. With two lone pairs, we get XAX forming a single angle again, and so this is again called a bent geometry. Note, however, here that the bond angle between XA and X would be 109.5 degrees, whereas the angle in the trigonal planar case would be 120 degrees. For a steric number of five, we actually have a variety of possible molecular geometries depending on the number of lone pairs. With no lone pairs, Notice the match. Once again, trigonal bipyramidal geometry, trigonal bipyramidal arrangement. With one lone pair, 
Notice that we have a choice here. There are two inequivalent types of positions within the trigonal bipyramidal geometry, axial and equatorial. In the seesaw molecular geometry, which I've listed here, the lone pair has been placed in an equatorial position, not in an axial position. In fact, none of these have lone pairs in an axial position. There's a good reason for this, and we'll return to the reason that we put lone pairs in the trigonal bipyramidal structure in equatorial positions. So with one lone pair in an equatorial position, we get an arrangement that looks like a seesaw. The two lower X atoms kind of form the fulcrum of a seesaw, if you think about it. With two lone pairs in the trigonal bipyramidal structure in equatorial positions, we get a molecule that looks T-shaped. We have XA and X forming a line and another X atom at right angles to that XA, X line, and so it looks like a T, right? With three lone pairs, all three lone pairs are occupying equatorial positions, and so X, A, and X simply form a linear structure. For the octahedral geometry, one more time, with zero lone pairs, we have an exact match between the geometry and electron group arrangement, octahedral and octahedral. With one lone pair, remember it doesn't matter where we put that lone pair because all six positions are equivalent in the octahedral structure. No matter where we put it, we arrive at a square pyramidal structure where four of the X atoms form a square plane and the other X atom is kind of in an axial position above that plane, right? With two lone pairs, the two lone pairs are placed at opposite positions, at a bond angle of 180 degrees rather than 90 degrees to get them as far apart from one another as possible, and the four remaining X atoms form a square planar molecular geometry.